Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. In the last episode, uh, we played cards with Ayana and lost, which turned out to be potentially a bad thing because it appears Yolana likes to win at playing cards. And later on, we made a huge mistake. We asked what year it was, which has resulted in us standing outside the nurse's hut, which is where we pick up today. So... Sometime later I finally came to the infirmary. I have nothing to do with that place. Though the nurse seemed quite... Um, quite caring. It's better to keep a distance from her. Besides, she leaves her windows uh, un... Besides, she leaves her curtains undrawn at night. Such benevolence is actually scary. She may know something, but I just hadn't the courage to enter the infirmary. Moreover, I had no reason to. Not a single one. Immersed in my own thoughts, I didn't notice the nurse who was standing on the porch. Hi there, pioneer. She came closer. You must be sick. Did you come for medicine? No, no, I was just wandering around. Oh, a truant, I see. But if you're here, I have a serious task for you. I gave her a look of inquiry. The word task made me feel uneasy. It sounded like something inevitable. The nurse smiled, spitefully. You both will help me make an inventory of the supplied medicine, which arrived today. Both? Who are we? Perhaps I misheard. But what word could be confused with both? Hi. Lena emerged from behind the nurse's back. It seems strange that I hadn't noticed her before until now, but to be totally honest with you, I had mostly been looking at the nurse's front. Come here after dinner. I have explained everything to Lena. She will tell you what to do. Medicine, huh? Supplied today? But Olga told me that no bus would arrive in the next couple of days. So there are visitors to our camp today. Yes. They arrived from the city this morning. Why are you asking? Just curious. All right then, uh, Pioneer. So tonight, after dinner, you'll be here. Maybe I... Lena was barely noticeable this whole time. Oh yes, surely she'd be able to remain invisible like a skilled ninja. I could do it on my own. No way. There are lots of boxes, and a pioneer is always ready. Isn't that so, pioneer? She gazed at me and smiled menacingly, with her eyes closed. I don't want to spend the whole evening doing something like this, and also I've got more important things to do. But rejecting this request would be really improper. If it wasn't Lena who was standing there, I definitely would think my way out. But... Let's spend some time with the lovely Lena, shall we? Nice. That's how a true pioneer should answer. Even after those words, I barely came a step closer to the Be prepared, always prepared motto. Then you can go. I looked at Lena, who was still staring at the ground. I guess all that time she spent staring at the ground was enough to learn everything there was to know about the life and habits of different insects. Plus, Lena likes to read, so she probably read many biological, botanical, and so on books. Perhaps she wants to become an entomologist. Ellipsis. Where will you head next? 
Lena's words drew me away from the obscure thoughts. We'd been standing in the square for some time, and my speculation about Bugs' lives were only an attempt to escape this awkward situation. Though why did I see it as awkward? Just don't forget, alright? Don't forget what? Well, tonight, after dinner, at the infirmary. Her face got a slightly grumpy look to it. Oh, that's an adorable grumpy look. <laughs> No way, that's impossible. All right, all right, after dinner, I am at your service, my lady. I thought too late. At my words, Lena blushed even harder. I need to find a way to ease this situation. Why did the nurse ask you to do it? I don't know. I was just sitting on the bench and reading a book when she came and... It's smart to ask a reliable person who would never say no. Okay. Well then, after dinner. Okay. I'll be off then. Yes, sure. She walked off somewhere beside the clubs and I just stood at the square for some time. So, what's next? I decided to visit my cabin in order to collect my phone. I don't know where I'll find myself today, but having a watch is always useful. Though having a wristwatch is easier. Suddenly I heard a different tune which was cutting through the usual noise of the camp. I listened to it carefully. Sounds like an electric guitar. Three repeating chords. No more. But this melody still felt somehow warm, as if a vacuum tube based audio amplifier was used. Could there be such a luxury here? The sound was definitely coming from somewhere near the stage area. I wonder who that could be. Let's go look, shall we? Going to the stage area, I caught sight of Alyssa on the stage. Yeah, that's not all of Alyssa I caught sight of. The girl was giving it a all. With her eyes closed, she placed one of her legs on the speaker and was swaying her body with the rhythm of the music. I couldn't recognise the melody, but I was pretty sure that I'd heard it before. Probably something from Soviet rock. I could have named a dozen bands in this genre right off the bat, but I was hardly an expert. The song seemed really simple, literally just a three chord progression. Probably even I could have played it given some time to practice. I wonder where Alyssa got her playing skills. In the USSR, such music had never been nationally acclaimed. The future rock star wasn't taking any notice of me. It was like she was trying to become one with the music, to resound in every note, in every bar, in every triplet. Rock heroes of the 80s instantly came to my mind. Many of them were devoted to music in similar ways. If she got dressed in something more suitable to that period's fashion, instead of a pioneer uniform, no one would notice the difference. Her performance was coming to an end. Picking out her last couple of chords, Alyssa finally noticed me. Did you like it? She doesn't seem as surprised as I would expect. Yeah, that was cool. As if you could do any better. And Mrs. smiled widely. I'm not saying I can do any better. I'm just not a pro in music. No doubt. Yep. I didn't know what to tell her next and was heading on my way. Wait a minute. What? Heard about the evening dance party? I thought it was a ball. I was certainly demanding to have one. Ball? Dance party? What's the difference? She frowned. Yes, I did, and so what? Are you going to go? After throwing those words, she turned away. I'm not sure. And you? What am I going to do there? Watch a bunch of morons? There was some truth in Alyssa's words, but this open disrespect surprised me. It's clear that it's not the idea of all that she hates. But why? What do you mean, by why? Well, 
why don't you want to come? Dance parties ought to be fun. Do you really think so? Annoyance flashed in her voice. I don't know, but I thought that you would. Never like them, she interrupted me. There's absolutely nothing to do in such parties. I see. So what's your plan then? I asked, just to keep the conversation going. I'll just carry on practicing. What are you practicing? The song, dumbass. You even heard it? Alyssa had gone totally mad. A few more wrong questions and I would have to run for my life. Who wrote that song? I did. So you wrote it by yourself? By myself. Cool. An awkward silence hung in the air. Okay then, I said, not wanting to be hung next to it. Don't you want to listen? Didn't I just hear it? That's not what I meant, she pouted. The whole song, it's just a jam for now. Alright then, come on then, do it. Not right now. Well, don't do it then. I felt uncertain about what she wanted from me. Probably my intestines. You mean you don't want me to play? Seems like I frustrated her. I got ready for her to smash the guitar on my forehead or something even worse. But there was only an upset expression in Melissa's face. I want to. I told you. Come here tonight then. I'll play it for you. For me? How cute. Tonight is the dance party. You said you wouldn't go. I didn't say that. Frankly speaking, I didn't want to go, but messing around with the chair was no good either. Olga wouldn't like it. Screw her! Yeah, that's kind of been my plan for the last few days. Said Alyssa, getting steamed up. <sighs> yeah, look at that face. No way whatsoever. All this wasn't really what I'd planned. Oh, screw off. Not that I was really interested in myself. She clucked a disapproval and turned away. I was just wondering if the decision I made was the right one when suddenly I was interrupted by a ringing, calling the pioneers for lunch. I looked towards the canteen. I suppose it's time to go. Hunger is a sharp form. I turned around with an intent to call Alyssa to come along. But she looked so cheerless and down. Every musician should know when it's time to leave. I grumbled under my breath. Who is marching forward in a row? It's our pioneer squad. Pioneers in a row march to the canteen in the Sovniok camp. I was looking for a place where no one would disturb me. Like what happened before. Just so I can eat in peace. And for that I have to at least not be the last one to come. But I'm pretty sure whatever happens here happens whether I want it to or not. The canteen was as crammed full as an egg. Olga was standing at the entrance, guarding it like a hawk. Occasionally she'd swoop down and tear bits out of it with her beak. Well, Semyon, were you working hard today? Hard enough. Well done. Truly well done. And the hardest is yet to come. I just bet. Fine. Take a seat next to the girls. She pointed at a table next to the pillar. Slavia, Ulyana, and Lena were already sitting there. Not bad company, at least. Not the worst. I got my meal and went up to them, confident that Ulyana hadn't touched this one. Do you mind if I sit here? I caught myself, sounding a bit clueless. There were no other free places anyway. Nah, of course not. Please do. <laughs> Lena remained silent. Today, the meal consisted of a plate of borscht. I suspected there was some meat lurking in it, but I had no evidence. Some poultry. Chances are, chickenus domesticus with fried potatoes and a traditional glass of compote. 
That actually sounds quite nice. I found myself liking the local food more and more. I guess I just came to the conclusion I have no other choice, which means there's no use in complaining. Thank God there's something to eat. You coming to the ball tonight? I don't know. He will come. He got nowhere to go. He got soul. Yolana said happily. He will come for sure. Of course. I can't miss the opportunity to watch you make a fool of yourself. She got it right, so I decided not to reply. And what about you? I asked Lena. Yes, she replied briefly. See, you should go too then. Let's try that again in the right voice. Say, you should go too then, said Slavia, giving me no choice. Don't forget to wear your tailcoat. Apparently, Yolanda was so pleased with her joke that she laughed out loud. But I really had nothing to wear. My wardrobe was just a pioneer uniform and my winter clothes, which is odd because my wardrobe's made out of wood, which would be inappropriate even in the evening. And what will you be dressed in, entertainer? Secrets. Would it be a little dress, just like a kindergarten's matinee? Yolana turned red. Looks like I managed to offend her. No, I would wear a biohazard suit, so I don't catch an infection from you. I wonder what infection you are afraid of catching from me. Enough, you guys. Don't quarrel. Idiocy, of course. Looks like Yoyana was pleased with her, as she thought, brilliant answer again. You know, if you already have the flu, you can't catch a cold? Two can play at that game. What are you implying? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I looked away slyly. Do you mean that? She went red again. I don't mean anything. Guys... Even that it was Lena who'd interfered, it probably really was time to stop. You're asking for it? You're going to get it? What? You'll finally wise up? Instead of replying, Yolana grabbed her plate filled with borscht and tipped it over my head. This game met an unexpected finale. Oh, you little... She jumped up and tried to run away. But this time, she won't get away. I grabbed her hand. Hmm. And now what? I can't just smash her head against a table. This pantomime lasted a few seconds. Suddenly, a Yolana skillfully grabbed a glass of the compote and splashed it in my face. That way, she managed to get free of my grip. She dashed off towards the counter and I chased her. Suddenly, an earthquake started. This resulted in several flipped tables, a pile of smashed tableware, five pioneers crippled by various injuries and a full exhaustion of both parties. A draw, sort of. A belligerent draw. With too much belligerence. We stood before each other and breathed heavily. Tell me you won't behave this way again. And you? Olga snuck up on us from behind, which is kind of ironic. It's what I've been wanting to do to her. When you think about it, such a riot couldn't go unnoticed. Well, are you satisfied with yourselves now? Her voice appeared to be calm, but I was sure she was just about to explode. And who's going to clean up all this mess? Exactly what happened. Who, I'm asking... I'm asking you. Oh. To go. Oh. Him. Replied Yolana with complete confidence. Her. I objected less confidently. Both. 
the camp leader brought a conclusive end to this ongoing argument. Generally, I wasn't sure what my share of this blame is more than hers, although Ilana didn't have a drop of guilt on her face. Beat it. I'm not cleaning. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. This is his fault. He started it first. No, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. I'm not going to sort out all that nonsense. Semyon, go grab a mop, a bucket, some cloths, Uncle Tom Cobbley. You know, that kind of stuff in the closet. And as for you... She looked at Yolanda with such a burning gaze that I felt sorry for the girl. You start to pick up the broken tableware immediately, or you shall never leave. Olga took a deep breath and continued. You're nothing but trouble. How many times have I told you? I decided to skip the lecture and went to the closet that appeared to be near the exit. Suddenly a perfect idea flashed in my head. Why don't I just run away? Sure. Olga has caught us already, but I'm not the one to blame. Of course, I'm not that true pioneer she keeps talking about, but in comparison to Yolana. Anyway, she's the principal culprit. It's not like I have nothing better to do than cleaning up the mess here. I have to seek answers. The truth is out there somewhere. Flash through my mind. Right, what should we do? I'm getting a bit concerned we're getting closer and closer to Iliana, but I don't want to run away because that seems to be sort of a, a poor approach to the whole thing. So I'm going to stay and help her with cleaning up and risk the consequences. No, running away is hardly a good idea. For starters, Olga has caught me already and dashing off would only aggravate my punishment. As well as that, I was indeed partially guilty. Of course it was all her fault. But if I hadn't reacted like that, probably we could have avoided this thrashing. Probably. I opened the cabinet and took out a broom, a mop and a dustbin. There was no Uncle Tom Cobbley, which was slightly disappointing. Olga wasn't anywhere near Yolanda by the time I returned. She's gone. Can't you see for yourself? Yolanda looked upset. All her youthful spirit vanished without a trace. Okay, hang on a sec. I'll go and wash myself a bit first. I shot her an angry glance. I wanted to shoot her. And headed towards the exit. I watched the scraps of lunch off myself and returned to the canteen. Well, no escaping it. We have to clean up. It's all because of you. Just a single gaze from her gave me the creeps. Of course it is. It's me who's guilty of everything. It's me who's the local natural hazard. Oh, shut up. Still, it's kind of strange that she's not trying to avoid this cleanup duty. Yolana had the solid opportunity to just run away and leave me alone, but somehow she did the exact opposite, diligently gathering broken plate fragments, mopping the floor, picking up chairs and tables. In fact, she was so fast that I had a tough time keeping up with her. Well now, aren't you suddenly acting all goody-goody? It's not like I want to spend the rest of the day with you, you dog. She still sounded irritated. Listen, you've got to understand that you can't behave like that. At least not to such an extent. For some reason, I decided to try and give her a moral lecture. I haven't done a thing. It was you who was calling me names. Yolanda grabbed a bucket and mop and went to the farthest corner of the canteen. Looks like she's still angry. Looking back at a mountain of broken terribleware, I probably I finally began to understand the scope of the catastrophe. We were lucky that at least the forks and spoons were made out of metal. We'll still have something to eat with. But there were hardly any plates left. Hey. 
Yulani called to me with a shout. I went over to her. I don't get it. Why do you hate me so much? Well, there's a loaded question, isn't it? And the answer will have to wait until next week, I'm afraid. Our time is well uh, We've done more than 20 minutes this evening, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I have a nasty feeling we're going to be ending up with you, Yulana, the way we're going, but I would love to hear in the con comments what you think of the girls, which ones you find more attractive, which ones you'd like us to end up with. No promise, because I'm blindly finding my way through this storyline. And please don't give me spoilers, but uh, it'd be interesting to see who people would like me to aim for. So, until next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.